Hey guys, Balkan Arctic here and here I am again in wonderful Budapest, Hungary. Uh, I'm here for a vacation but I thought, well, why not record a couple of videos? So anyways, here I am in one of their, uh, I think this is the biggest park in Budapest. And this is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is the Ethnography Museum. And I really love this building because you can see it has this integration with the landscape and especially when it's part of the park, uh, I feel like they've kind of, they've placed a museum inside of the park without kind of stealing away land from the park because they, well, they gave it away on the rooftop of the building. So I thought it looks really, really cool. And then of course my natural response to that is how do we do that inside of Revit? And that's what this tutorial is going to be all about. I'm just going to be showing you how to model this type of a building inside of Revit. Now, of course, before we get started, I would just like to ask you to check out my website, balkanarctic.com. I'm going to be leaving a link in the description of this video. There you can find all of my courses, all of the kind of beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced level courses. You can find some of my customized Revit templates. You can find some really high quality Revit families, as well as a plugin. So make sure to check that out. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's jump straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit, so let's get started. I am just going to go here to Models and then go to New. Uh, and for the template file, I'm just going to choose my architecture design template. Now, if you want to check out my customized Revit templates, so ready to go Revit templates, you can find them on my website and I'm going to be leaving a link to those in the kind of the cards above. So anyways, now let's click OK and let's let Revit start up. So once Revit starts up, I'm going to be making some adjustments. So let me go here to the south uh, elevation here and let's make some additional levels. So I'm going to go here to architecture. Oops, I don't want that architecture level. Uh, and then let's place them at the same uh, distance as the other ones. So I'm just going to have additional two levels. OK, just like that. Uh, OK, now uh, let's go. Uh, and start modeling the actual shape, which we're going to be doing as an in-place mass. So what you want to do is, and let's go here to the 3D view, uh, let's go to the massing in sight, go to show mass and turn that on, and then let's go to in-place mass. Uh, for the name, I'm just going to leave it as mass one, I don't really care, and then let's open up the site plan, and let's create one hor uh, horizontal reference plane here. So you just want to go to reference plane, uh, and then you just want to create a horizontal reference plane and you also want to name it so you can select it easier. So I'm just going to call this one the main ref plane. Okay, so once I have my main reference plane, uh, let's now start creating the shape. Now again that I'm going to do in the south elevation. So what I'll do is just use the arc tool, start and uh, finish arc. Uh, go to pick a plane by name and then pick my main reference plane. Click OK. And now what you want to do is just make sure uh, when you come to that level 4, what you'll see it's going to get that little uh, line that's suggesting to us that it's going to snap to that. And then I can click extend it and let's extend it by 100 meters or 10,000 centimeters just like that and then go down to the bottom which is level one and click hit the escape key a couple of times and there we go so now we have our main structure here or the kind of the top of it uh, so next I'm just going to go again uh, to draw tools but in this case let's start with pick lines and then I'm going to give it an offset uh, in the value of uh, two floors which is 720 centimeters so just enter the offset of 720 like that okay now let's go to the line tool and uh, make sure that the offset is set back to zero and go down like this and you do the same thing on the other side you just go down hit the escape key a couple of times there we go uh, then uh, let's go to trim and extend to corner and let's trim this here and here and we have the beginning of our shape uh, now you want to go to the 3d view just like so select that shape go to create form and it's going to extrude it like so uh, now what you want to do is maybe pull this back in and then on the other side just use the tab key a couple of times and extend it then on the other side and then you can also go to the site plan and just see what's going on here so you can select the whole shape here 
and then you can zoom out and just use the arrow keys. I just like to center it a little bit. There's really no kind of practical reason. I just like it so. Okay, anyways, now let's go back to the 3D view. And now we have to cut this off at kind of the, the ground level. So for that, let's go back to our south elevation. Let's go to the rectangle tool. Uh, let's go to placement plane, main ref plane, and then make sure that the draw on the work plane is selected. Once we have this selected, now we can just, again, make sure to snap to that bottom level one, extend this thing, and there we go. Now, when we go back to the 3D view, we can select this rectangle on the bottom. We can go to create form, and in this case, let's pick out the void form, click, and it's going to extend it there. Uh, select the other side, extend it here, and when we finish, it's not cutting through it. Now, don't worry, this happens all the time. Nothing to worry about, you just go to cut the geometry, select the form, select the void, and there we go. It's just going to cut right through that. Okay, so once we have all of this done, now we have our main building shape. Uh, now, what you like to do is, because of that uh, building, it has kind of a little uh, walkway or a track where you can just go all the way around. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail into modeling that because it has kind of a combination of stairs and ramps and so on. Uh, it would be really complicated and it would take a lot of time if you're doing this as an actual project. You're kind of looking at at least like a week's work uh, to, to make sure that everything looks exactly how you want it to look. Uh, but just to give you kind of uh, some basic insight on how you can actually then model additional elements on this curved shape, let me show you how I'm going to create kind of an inset for the grass. So I want one of these panels to be kind of concrete walkway and the other ones I want to be grass. So let me show you how I would do that. I would go back to the south elevation, uh, go to my pick lines, and then make sure that the drawn work plane is selected and also the main reference plane is selected. So I'm just going to click on this line here and then I'm going to give it an offset of, let's go with 15 centimeters and then I'm going to click again and offset this down, perfect. And then let's go to the line tool, again, make sure it's on the same page, okay. And then here, uh, let's, let's just go like a little bit like this. So that's kind of like, yeah, one meter. Let's let's do a bit more. So let's see. Oops, I still have that 15 centimeter offset. So let's bring that down to zero. This is 140. Okay, that's fine. So just go like that down. Uh, let's go to the other side. Same thing here. Let's see, that's 116. 170, that's a bit too much. 140, perfect. And then go down and hit the escape key a few times. Now you can come in here and then you can just use trim and extend to corner and trim it here like so, and then trim it here like so. Okay, so once all of this is in place, hit the escape key a few times, select this whole thing, and then go to create form, solid form, perfect. Uh, now let's bring this in a bit, there we go. And then let's select this side here. So I just, uh, I'm using uh, the tab key. Okay, that didn't work. So let's use the tab key again to select this side. Okay. And then let's extend it a bit more like so. There we go. Uh, and now again, we want to cut. So you just go to cut the geometry. And there we go. So now as you can see, we have that indentation in our mass so we can have kind of concrete here and then this inner side will be just grass. And now I think if I select this face, I should be able to move it down if I need. No, I, I will not be, so don't do that. So if you wanna modify this, you uh, hit the tab key a few times until you select the void form and then you can select the side of that void form and then you can modify that if you want. Okay, anyways, uh, now let's make those terraces uh, that uh, there is a bunch of terraces here on both sides. So what I'm going to do for the terraces is just snap to the levels, to level two and level three. So you just go to the rectangle tool, uh, go to draw on work plane, snap to level two, for example, here. And then we can just create a rectangle like this. 
and you'll see that the line becomes gray at this point here. See how it's dark and then it's gray. So if I switch this off, will it help? No, it will not. So anyways, uh, it's dark and then it's gray. So basically it's telling you that it goes into the model at this point here. So what you want to do then is just select this, go to create form, void geometry, and there we go. And you have that balconies. And again, if you want to modify it, you just come that to that cut, hit the tab key a few times until it highlights the void, select the void, and then hit the tab key a few times until you select one side, and then you can extend it if necessary, like so. And then you can do the same thing on the other side. So here, let's go to level three, so set work plane, level three, and again, let's use a rectangle here, and I'm just going to go like this. Okay, it's really close here to the edge, so let me try something else. So I'm going to go like this and then move this out like so, okay. And now let's turn this into a void. But now I'm just going to highlight the bottom and then extend it deeper in. So it's going to be cutting into this even more. So let me try that again. Again, it's a little bit difficult to select it at first, but when you get the hang of it, it's really easy and fun. And there we go. So now it's going to look like this. Uh, now, also something that you want to keep in mind is when you create these voids starting from a certain level, I like to just bring this up a little bit because it's going to help with the mass floors. So you'll see that in just a moment now. Okay. So we have the kind of the, the main shape done. Obviously you can add so much more detail to this, uh, but it's going to cost you extra time. So just keep that in mind. Obviously this is just a quick uh, tutorial, so I'm just going to keep it simple. Anyways, uh, let's now hit finish mass. And as I said, now we can use two surfaces for the roof. So what I would do there is just go to architecture, or sorry, not architecture, massing and site. I would go to roof and let's use the, yeah, let's use the basic 4D roof and uh, go to select the surface. So let's select the surface here, create roof. There we go. And then for the outside, let's say we can use the different one. So roof, we can use this one and then I can select that one, create roof and so on. So basically, as you can see, we have a kind of a different texture on the inside and the outside. So you can apply grass here on the inner side or in the inset and then something else on the outside. Uh, now for the rest of these, uh, let's now add floors next. Now for floors, first you want to select the shape and then you have this mass floors option, you click, and then you just select which levels you want to use. I want to use all of them, so let's apply all of them. And now as you can see, it's going to create these mass floors. Now these are just kind of um, generic geometry at this point, but when you go to floor here, now you can select those there we go, those two, and the one on the bottom, create floor, and that now it's going to apply actual Revit geometry to that. And it's fitting in perfectly, and see how here, uh, now we have the floor, uh, because we have moved this up, that's why we have the floor there. However, on the other side, because we have that indentation, uh, the, the floor basically has a, a hole here, so you would have to add another uh, roof on the bottom here, so you would go to Arctic, uh, I'm messing inside uh, roof and then add the roof here. There we go. And then for the rest of these, you would basically add simple walls. So let's add like an exterior wall here and here and here and on the inside even. You can add a wall there if necessary. It's sticking out a little bit, but don't worry, you can actually uh, bring it in if you want, like so. So it works a lot better. Uh, and then let's do the same thing on the other side. So massing inside, a wall, and then we just have three walls here. Oops, it keeps getting away from me. And there we go. So that's basically how you create this type of a shape. Uh, more time you put into that, it's going to look way more realistic, but I think for like a quick 10 minute tutorial, I think we did get a lot done. So anyways, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you want to get this project file or any of my other Revit project files, you can. They're on my Patreon page, which I'm going to be linking up just below this video in the description and then also up in the cards above.
Thank you for watching, guys. Make sure to check out my website, balkanarctic.com, for more uh, Revit courses. Uh, there I have over 120 hours of content, uh, and I'm adding more each week. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, and also I've added a video over there that might interest you as well.